So, Professor Dierks, today you, you spoke with us about the anatomy of a threat, uh, the anatomy of blackmail, um, and the psychology behind how some of these decisions and these actions and these choices are made. Why is this so important, especially in the context of everything that's going on today around the world, politically, socially, economically, threats, blackmail? Why is this so relevant? I think it's relevant because it's part of real life. I mean, there are a lot of people who will preach the Bible of win-win negotiations. And certainly we're trying to find a solution that works for both sides. But that shouldn't um, obscure the other reality that in a negotiation, ultimately people are um, working in their own best interests. And you have to resolve the question, who gets what out of the deal? And almost invariably that involves using leverage. Okay? In the US, I never talk about threats. This is not politically correct. We refer to it as leverage. But the under underlying reality is the same. So both in commercial negotiations and international diplomacy, I think it's just a fact of life. Threats are used all the time. And sadly, not in a very sophisticated manner. Um, my own personal view is that Donald Trump is not very, very good as blackmail. It makes every mistake in the book. Um, so there is considerable scope for being more sophisticated about that. Absolutely. And, you know, the topic of today's uh, end conference is the future of negotiations. You know, from your perspective, what is the future of negotiations and how does this topic of threats and blackmail, how does that fit into the future with everything that we're seeing politically? Right. Um, on the future of negotiation, there's a belief amongst a lot of people that um, the field is progressing rapidly and that we have now new insights in negotiation, and I have my doubts about that. Um, suppose we could revive uh, a merchant from Venice, okay, who in the 14th century was a very, very successful businessman, a very successful negotiator. And we could bring him back, revive him, and he arrives today here. Would he be an ineffective negotiator, or would he be the same savvy negotiator that he was back then? Well, I'm convinced that he'd still be an effective negotiator today. Um, so are there really radically new approaches to negotiation as some people would want us to believe? Is it really true that what business people have done collectively for the last 20 centuries is really dumb or unwise? Is it true that haggling is a Neanderthal approach to negotiation that we need to do something radically different called principle negotiation. I don't believe that. Uh, I believe that what perhaps we're able to do a little bit better today than years ago is we're perhaps better able to articulate what smart, savvy professionals have been doing for centuries. It's not that we know genuinely new things necessarily, but we have a better understanding what the practitioners, the smart practitioners are doing, and we're able to articulate it a bit better than we were in the past. Amazing. And the second part of my question was about, you know, we see how the political landscape is changing with the types of leaders and the move to nationalism and populism around the world. What role do you think we are going to see threats and warnings and blackmail and this kind of very aggressive negotiation approach, what role is that going to play in the future? Is it sustainable? Um, what has changed, I think, is that threats, while they were always used in international diplomacy or warnings, right, is that in the past they were conveyed in a sophisticated manner through diplomatic channels, using the proper language, making quiet moves. Uh, now, because of these populist leaders, these threats are being tweeted. And by making this a public spectacle, uh, I think we haven't improved on the efficiency of the use of leverage at all. It's very, very counterproductive. So my hope is that we're going to go back to good old, quiet, back-channel diplomacy as opposed to, opposed to tweet storms. Very good. Well, Professor, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure, pleasure, as always, to have you with us. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.